everybody, my name's Laura Muse and today I'm so excited. I've actually got the one and only Mr. David Siegler with me today. Yay! Hello. I'm, uh, I'm excited too. <laughs> this is how I look when I'm excited. <laughs> Um, so David's been really kind to give up some of his time for me today and ask, um, you've had some really burning questions in the community about deal packaging and David's been kind enough to take some time out of his day to answer them. So if anyone doesn't know who David is, um, David, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> okay, so uh, at heart I'm a single let buy to let investor, uh, that's what I do, but since I came to Progressive in 2014, I started a deal packaging business, uh, so I've been packaging deals. You're going to ask me what deal packaging is, aren't you? So I, I won't deep dive <laughs> at this point, uh, but we're going to talk about that. So we're going to talk about property, we're going to talk about deal packaging, we're going to talk about sourcing, we're going to talk about how to be successful with it, and um, you know, full disclosure team, full disclosure, <laughs> um, it's been a joy to work with Laura the last three, four, six months. Yeah. Um, because, uh, do you know what, the biggest obstacle I see to people being successful in property is that they don't do it. And the great thing about Laura is whatever you, advice she gets, she does it. Yay. So how, <laughs> cool, how cool is that? I mean, you are an example of how to do it, Laura. So oh, hopefully you. we'll get into um, a little bit about you as we move forward. So how can I help? You're interviewing me. Yes, so... The community, one, I'd like to explain actually what is deal packaging. Yes. Okay. So here's what it is, right? You find an investor, right? And you find a deal. And you put the two together, but you're not involved in it, right? Uh, the investor buys the deal. And you get paid a fee for finding the deal, finding the investment, right? So uh, there's a lot of things that go on there. So I need to fill that out a little bit. Okay. So if you have no money, if good, oh, good afternoon, Lenka, welcome. If you have no money, right, if you're not experienced in property, if you don't know what your strategy is at this point, deal packaging is ideal because as packages, we have to know every single strategy. Okay. Now, I'm not saying to you that this afternoon you have to go and learn every single strategy. <laughs> that would be too difficult. But as you go through the journey, you start to pick it all up. And if you work with mentors and coaches, they've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, they can help you. Right. Massively in my uh, we talk. experience. Absolutely. <laughs> but, um, so that's basically what deal packaging is. You find your investor first. If you get nothing else of me answering these questions, is find your investors first, find out what they want, do a fact find, deep dive into their goals, dreams, aspirations, whatever it is that they need, their financial criteria. And then what you go, you go shopping. We like shopping. We right? like shopping we like, a lot. <laughs> we like shopping. For houses. <laughs> Absolutely, for the investor. That's what you do. And you get paid handsomely as a result. Does that help? It does. Cool. So my second question is, how do you set up a deal packaging business and what do you need to be have to be compliant within deal packaging? Because obviously there's money involved, there's potentially other people's funds involved. Yep. Okay, so your first first part of the question first, and then we'll come back yeah. to compliance. Cool. Okay, so when I started, this is how I did it. <coughs> Excuse me, I uh, was working in the round Greater Manchester. I was based in Oldham, so my office was Sainsbury's on Union <laughs> Street. Okay, um, they had one of those Sainsbury's cafes yeah. there, Laura, and you could get. Um, was it a meal deal? <laughs> well, it, you know, times were a bit harder then, so I'd have um, a bowl of soup and a balm. Nice. Yeah. What is a balm? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I did. Now, isn't that interesting, right? <laughs> it's a regional thing. So the first time in, I went for my soup in the bar, 199 right? <laughs> And um, the lady, very nice lady, uh, behind uh, the counter said to me, do you want your balm? And I said, I don't know. What, what is a balm? She said, a balm cake. So in the south, we call them crusty rolls. So you mean a bread cake? A bread cake. <laughs> Who knew? Right. That's from Sheffield. It's a yeah. bread kick. Yeah. <laughs> the weirdest experience I ever had with this uh, was I was in Thasda. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I popped down to Thasda um, in Ashton Underline. And as you walk in, they have the special offers. And they had 
pies. You know, we've, we've spoken <laughs> about pies, right? We love a good pie, pie a humble yeah, pie. You know, no, pie. 99p for a pie. And it was me and my business partner, and we'd had a bad week. Hadn't got any deals over the line. We were on the orange stickers team, you know, working <laughs> through the orange stickers. So the pie, 99p, that'll keep us going. Deserve for a week, yeah. And um, what we need to go with the pie is some custard. So we're looking for custard. Couldn't find custard anywhere. Young Dave is coming towards us in Thasda. He's got five stars here to help, right? Dave, the very chap. I've, I've got this pie and I need some custard. You know, I don't mean... Don't, I don't mind if it's fresh or we got to make it up or whatever, just custard. And he's going, no, oh, we haven't got any custard. custard. We don't do custard. No, custard. You don't do... No, no. You, you know, it's yellow and you pour it. Oh, he said, custard. <laughs> That's what I've been saying for 20 minutes, Dave. That's how we were up. So, uh, yeah, we had pie and custard. I don't know how we finished that. <laughs> I don't know what how was we the question? finished up on that. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? Setting up your business. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you need a phone, right? You need a laptop. You need somewhere to sit. Sainsbury's, they have those leatherette. They weren't real leather. Leatherette <laughs> sofas. And uh, it was really cool because they had the papers delivered in Sainsbury's as well. So you can spend the day there quite happily. Day out in us. <laughs> <laughs> so day out in old us. <laughs> I'll spoil that. We might nip next door into TK Maxx and just Ooh, rummage through the... Pushing uh, the door out. That's when he sold the deal. <laughs> yeah. um, so you need that. And then you need access to the letting agents. And you are on your way. I mean, it's as simple and as crude as that. And it can become as sophisticated as you want it to be. But day one, you know, why not just think about... So we're all marketers. You've got to do your marketing. Uh, you've got to start talking about what you're doing. So in my case, it was sourcing properties that cash flow in and around Greater Manchester. But you can do it in any of the great cities of the north, talking cash flow as you come further south. You're going to talk about capital growth, which is what makes people wealthy. Really excited about capital growth because cash flow will get you out the job, right? It will um, pay your bill. Yeah. Okay. And I did a lot of cash flow stuff in the around Manchester and all I got was cash flow, right? If I bought, instead of 50 odd houses in the north, if I bought five in, in the south, in the around London, I'd be in a completely different place today. We may not have met. I may, may not have come here, met. right? Because it's capital growth that makes you wealthy over time. That's my view. Uh, so you need phone, laptop, somewhere warm and dry to sit, access to estate agents. That's it. Uh, and cool. would you recommend people concentrated on specialising buy to let or specialising HMO or a bit of everything? Okay, so it's hard day one to make that decision. You've got to find your niche. Yeah. So my niche became sourcing HMOs. So I've done 32 back to brick newly constructed HMOs for investors, um, kitchens pushed out into the rear yard under permitted development, dormer windows in the loft rooms under permitted development, arm wrestling with building control, they were the main issue. <laughs> so there were no planning issues, C3 to C4, mm, yeah. Resi to HMO. Um, but it's, that's, that's hard. I didn't want to do HMOs. I'm not an HMO landlord, right? I'm a single let landlord. I'm, make no pretense about that but it's what people wanted because back in 2015 when I got going that was the hot strategy the way SA yeah. is today HMOs. everyone wanted HMOs so we did HMOs so I learned a lot about HMOs by packaging HMOs um what was the question I don't know. oh well should you pick the strategy I'm still on pies, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> should you pick the strategy I think the go-to for packages the go-to the fastest way to get going today in deal packaging is package rent to rent, rent for serviced accommodation. Now you need a bit of a power team to make that work. You need a great serviced accommodation operator. I don't want you guys to go out and manage uh, SA units, do linen, change light bulbs, get phone calls at half past two in the morning because the guests can't work out how to turn the telly on. That's real. It that is happens. real. <laughs> um, so. That's what I would say if you're starting out today anywhere in the country, rent to rent SA is fast, fast, fast. Because you haven't got to go through the legal process, no, no solicitors, there's no mortgages. It's, you know, you've seen the pictures with the keys jangling, right? They're the ones you need. Cool. Compliance? Compliance. Compliance, okay. Compliance is a huge, massive subject, okay? Uh, I feel I'm like it can get very complicated, compliance. People have yeah, a lot of different... Love it. They but know, people gets, that love it, they, yeah. they love it. 
Or we do not. happier to spend an afternoon talking about compliance than go out and look at some houses, right? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I'll give you just the basics. The basic registrations to keep you straight and legal. Yeah, that's what we need. If you have these things, I've never seen anyone with these things go to prison. It'll be all right, team. Okay. Um, number one, you need professional indemnity insurance. Uh, Leighton Cooper in the progressive community is really good at that. He can help you with that. He knows what he knows what they, they want. Uh, once you've got that, you can register with a redress scheme. So most people now, I believe, are using the property ombudsman, the yeah, TPO. Uh, they're all very similar and all the same sort of price. Have they so, just put their rates up? Uh, all the rates have gone up um, for everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll talk about the cost in a minute. Uh, so you've got PI insurance, you've got TPO registration. You have to register with the ICO, the Information Commissioner's Office, Office uh, for data protection. Right, that on its own. I mean, if you deep dive into data protection, you tie yourself in knots. I mean, <laughs> GDPR. I don't even know what GDPR stands for. Okay, <laughs> I just registered. And the fourth one is you need to register with HMRC for anti-money laundering supervision. Uh, so that's really, really important. So those are the four basic things you need to do. Cost to set up today. It's over a thousand pounds now. Yes. Yeah, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred quid probably. But you can get that back in one deal. Get it back in your first deal. I've never, you know, I've set up and lost a few businesses over the years, Laura. I'm a failed retailer. I am. It took me thirty years to fail, team. It did. But I am a failed retailer. Um, I lost tens of thousands of pounds. Tens of thousands of pounds retailing. Uh, Twenty shops, sixty staff. I didn't know where everyone, anyone was. I didn't know where my stock was. I didn't know which shop was open. Because it was back in the day before computers and all that sort of thing. We did it all. There was bits of paper everywhere. Um, property's completely different to that. You've got control. One of the reasons I went into property 